Good morning, class, and welcome. Today we're going to continue our discussion about uh, uh, simple and compound interest. And as we found out yesterday, uh, if we've got simple interest, it's, it's going to be generated each year. The account balance could be generated by an arithmetic sequence. If we have compound interest, we're looking at a geometric sequence for how the, 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 uh, the account grows. Um, the, the compound interest can be a little bit more, uh, a little bit more interesting or complex than we discussed yesterday because yesterday we talked about the account just being compounded annually, meaning once and only once at the end of the year, uh, we would compound how much interest was earned and then deposit that into the account. But there's no reason why we have to compound just once a year. We can do it multiple times a year. We can do it four times a year. We can do it uh, once a month. We can do it We can do it every day. We can do it 365 days in a year. And actually, you can go even further than that. Um, certainly, there was a time, right, when the computational ability of a bank to go through and figure out what an account was worth every single, uh, every single day would be ridiculous. So there was a time when things would be compounded quarterly. But, but now we, we do other things, but we'll talk about that more. So below are two sequences, and we're asked to interpret them as yearly account balances. So we've got the, the I guess I'm gonna say the zeroth year, so we've got our initial deposit, and then we've got year one, two, three, four, et cetera. So this is interesting. So I am, I am saying that the first number there is the zeroth term. It's what we deposited in the account to start with. Um, <clears throat> is the investment growing with simple interest or compound interest? That's a question. What is the annual interest rate? And we're <clears throat> also asked to write an explicit equation for each sequence. Well, as I look at these two uh, equations, I'm, I'm immediately drawn to the second one, <laughs> just because I can see it's adding 12 each time. So I know because I'm adding the same number each time, what I'm adding isn't changing. Um, it's just a constant adding of the same value that this is simple interest. So the thing about <clears throat> simple interest is, yeah, we're adding 12, adding 12, adding 12, but we actually need to figure out what the ratio is between the first two values. So we know what our interest rate is. So if I do this, this looks like I'm figuring, this looks like I think I'm multiple, I have a common multiplier and I'm trying to figure out what that ratio is, but I'm not, I'm just trying to figure it out with, is with, for the first two terms. So if I take 312, that's the new value, and divide it by the previous value, okay, uh, 312, 312, divided by 300, I get, I get that this multiplier for the first term and the first term only, right, is 1.04. So what that tells me is, yeah, it's simple interest because we keep adding $12 every single year regardless, but I, I can now tell you what the interest rate is. They added 4% of that amount originally deposited. So they deposited $300 and the account grew by 4% in that first year. So 4% is the simple interest. So for B, <clears throat> I can say, um, that was one of the questions It says, so this is simple interest. What is the annual interest rate? So. <clears throat> It is simple interest, 4% is the annual interest rate. Next thing it says is um, write an explicit equation for this sequence. Okay, so for this sequence, I could say that the balance of the account, the dollars in the account, Y, is equal to the zeroth term, how much I initially deposited, plus 12 times X. So... <clears throat> Where did the 12 come from? <clears throat> it came from the fact that it was a 4% simple interest. So if I take 300 and I multiply that by point, point 0.04, right? 300 times point 0.04. Yeah, it, got, it gave me the $12. 
So it's adding $12 each time, and every single year that goes by, it's gonna to continue to just add the $12. So I think I've answered all the quest uh, questions for uh, B. Now let's go to A. So A is not growing by the same amount, right? It's not, it's, it's, it's geometric. This is, this is compound interest. So let's see if we can't figure out what the uh, multiplier is. So if I take a term like 8427, 8427, and I divide it by the previous term, 7950, and that should work with the, this other one too. If I do 8932.62, and I divide that by the previous term, 8427, I should get the same ratio. So let's look at 8427 divided by 7950. Okay, I got 1.06. So this equals 1.06. So my multiplier from that from that first from in the zero year, right, initial deposit to the first year is 1.06. Let's do the same thing for the other two just to verify. So 8932.62. And I'm going to divide that by 8427. 84.27, and I also get 1.06 equals 1.06. So <clears throat> at this point, I know that as I go forward each month, it's, it's this multiplier. I keep multiplying by 1.06. I can take that first number, 1 or 7, 9, 50, put that on the calculator stack, and then go times 1.06, and I can see there's the second term, there's the third term, the fourth term, et cetera. Yeah, I, we got this dialed in. So we know that this is 6% compound interest. Okay, we, we have here a geometric sequence because we have a common ratio our generator for this sequence is multiplying by 1.06. So if I was gonna write down an equation that would model this one's growth, it would be y is equal to my, my zeroth term, $7,950 times, open parentheses, 1.06, close parentheses, raised to the nth power. So again, if we think about this, what's happening here is I'm starting at 7950 and I multiply by 1.06, multiply by 1.06, multiply by 1.06. Every single time another year goes by, I multiply by 1.06 again. So that those are the that's the explicit formula for this. And again, 6% compounded interest. Let's move on to question 37. Oh, question 37. Oh, it has a graphic. It says for my for my money market account. You're putting the money in the pig for the money market account. Okay. A third option for investing money is investing in a money market account which offers to compound the interest more often. Okay, so this was getting into what we were talking to. It's not just going to compound once. It's going to compound more often. One example is a money market account that offers 8% annual interest rate compounded quarterly, four times per year. <clears throat> so here's the thing. Every single time I compound this, I don't, it's not the 8% interest rate that I use because it's happening quarterly. I am going to divide that interest rate into four. So every single time I compound, over the course of the year, it's 2% each quarter, which is every three months, right? Every three months. If I was gonna compound monthly, I would take the annual interest rate and divide that by 12. But here I've got an annual interest rate of 8%. I'm gonna compound it quarterly. So I divide that by four. So my multiplier for this, because it's gonna grow by 2% by each quarter, my multiplier is going to be 1.02.
All right. So we are asked to model the quarterly value of the $1,000 investment in this market account with an equation. Let Y represent the money in the account. Let me clear out some room so that we can work here. Okay, I've kicked this down so there's some room to work. So we're going to model this. And model this quarterly value of the $1,000 investment in this money market account with an equation. Okay, so y, let Y represent the money in the account after X quarters. Okay, so if I wanted to do that, it could be Y is equal to, now, it's an initial deposit of $1,000. My multiplier is 1.02, and I'm going to raise that to the X power. So it's important to note that with this definition of X, right, X, X is the number of quarters. So if I wanted to answer the question, what's this account worth in one year? One year would be four quarters, so I'd have to put, um, I'd have to multiply this by the number four. Um, and I could actually write this, I could write this so that, um, so that it was giving me the answer in number of years. So if I wanted to write this so that X was the number of years, but I'm still compounding quarterly, I could do this where I just said, well, let's just let this be 4X, right? So at that point, if I put in X as one, it would go four times one, which would be four, and it would give me the, all four quarters at once. But this says let X be, X be the number of quarters. So I'm gonna leave this as just X. All right, so there it is. I, that's that's that was all we wanted. Okay, let's see part part B. It says use the model to calculate the value of your of your one thousand dollar investment after four years. How does this compare with other investment options from problem thirty two? Oh, okay. I got. I have to go back to thirty two. Well, let's do this right now. Let's go ahead and uh, calculate that. So if I hit on clear. And I'm going to go $1,000. And I'm just going to uh, multiply that by my multiplier 1.02 raised to the power of. Now, this says four years. Every single one of those years contains four quarters. So if I want to know this for four years, I have to put 16 into this equation. So 16 quarters would be four years and it gives me this dollar value one thousand three hundred and seventy two dollars um, so that's what it would be worth after four years let's go back and compare that to question 32 so you can see here on the calculator you know that we've got the one thousand three hundred and seventy two dollars that's the compounded quarterly if I compare that with the uh, eight percent simple interest compounded, just it's it's never compounded. It's simple interest. Uh, every month we add eighty dollars. At four years, that would be worth one thousand three hundred and twenty dollars. So it's you know a fifty-two dollar difference. And if we go down and look at what that was for the one that was compounded annually. And it was compounded annually at 8%, right? So this was also this was also 8%. But you can see here the difference between compounding quarterly and compounding just once a year. Uh, if I compounded it once a year, the account balance there is $1,360.49. And opposed to what I have on my calculator here is um, about seven, about $12 more, right? So I'm getting about $12 more than the um, compounded once a year, and I'm getting $52 more based than, compared to simple interest. Okay, so we're gonna finish this lesson today with a, a look at a couple different representations and see if we can switch between the four multiple representations, situation, graph, table, and equation. So. Uh, we have $500 to invest, and we have several options available. We've been calling around, and we've, we've got some ideas about what we might want to do. Uh, crypto, no. <laughs> Bitcoin, no. Uh, your banker shows you the graph at right to explain what you can earn if you invest with him. Does this graph represent 
simple or compound interest, how can you tell? So when I look at this, oh, let me bring the graph over here. When I look at this graph, it looks like I'm going from 500 to 600 to 700. Well, that, that graph looks like simple interest. Every single year, I'm adding exactly $100, right? I, I know that this is simple interest because this is growing in a linear fashion, right? So how do I know? It, well, it's simple interest because it's growing in a linear fashion. That's what I would write down. Um, How can I tell? I can tell because it's a line and I'm adding the same dollar amount each time. What is the interest rate? Now that's interesting. Hmm. What is the interest rate? So it was, it was 500, let's see. I need to figure this out, this ratio. So I, I can see that it goes from $500 to $600 in the first year. And then the next year it's gonna go to 700. So in that first year, Right, the new value after that year is 600 divided by the previous year. So if I look at 600 divided by 500, it should give me that multiplier for the first year. So 600 divided by 500. And you guessed it. Wow, 20%. Hmm. 20% simple interest. 20% simple well that's that's kind of attractive because that's a huge interest rate but I don't I don't know if I'm required to keep that in that account for a long time um, because I bet for the first few years that's that's pretty nice okay uh, what else it says write an equation to represent how much money you would have as time passes let x represent time in years okay so let's wrap that question up with this so um, y is the dollar amount and that's going to equal my initial investment of 500 plus 100 dollars for each year so y equals 500 plus 100x that's it that's that's nice all right next next option uh, Jerry, Jerry, hi Jerry. Jerry says, I've got my money in a great account that compounds interest monthly. Mm. The equation is this uh, y equals 388. Hmm. Why 388? Is that, is that what was in the book? There, or did I just make that up? Y equals 388. Oh, I, I see why I'm confused. This <clears throat> I think this table has something to, to do with it, but this table is for part C below. So let me just kick that table down there and, and not worry about that. Okay, so back to this. Um, y equals 388 times 1.08 to the M represents how much money I have at the end of any month. What is Jerry's annual interest rate? Okay, so mm, here's the thing. This right here, 0 0.008, is his monthly interest rate, right? And just like when we went the other way to calculate the monthly interest rate, we took, uh, or it was quarterly when we took the interest and divided it by four. I'm kind of going the other way here. I've already divided by 12. So if I want to know what the, if I want to know what the annual interest rate is, I'm going to go 0 0.008, and I'm going to multiply that by 12. And I get 9.6. I think, I think, I think, so if I was to go 9.6 is my, is my annual interest rate. Ex that's expressed as a percentage. This is it as a decimal. But if I go 9.6 divided by 12, it should give me, 0.8 and 0.8 expressed as a decimal would be 0.008. Okay, okay, we're good. So this is, uh, so what is Jerry's annual interest rate? It's nine, oh, well, that's the wrong pin for this job. It is 9.6%. That's his annual interest rate. 
Um, write an equation to represent the total money if you invest $500 in an account with the same rate of return. Let M represent the number of months uh, that the money has been invested for. Okay, so Y, the amount of dollars, is going to equal $500 times 1.008. Raised to the m power. It's just like the equation that was given above, right? The only thing that's changed is my my initial deposit is five hundred dollars, but I'm still getting that point um, eight percent every month, which is a nine point eight percent annual interest rate. All right, and uh, let's see. Last thing, last thing is. An investment advisor shows you the table at the right. Okay, so we have a table at the right. And uh, it says write an equation for the table letting Q represent the number of quarters. Okay, so this is quarterly interest. Q represents the number of quarters the money has been invested. What is the annual interest rate? Okay. What is the annual interest rate? So every single quarter, I'm doing something to this. So if I want to figure out what the, the multiplier is per quarter, if I want to figure out what this jump is, the multiplier per quarter, I'm going to take the 515, and I'm going to divide it by the previous year's balance. So 515, 515 divided by 500. Okay, so this, this is equal to 1.03. So my quarterly interest rate was 3%. And if that's my quarterly interest rate, then the annual interest rate, 12% annual. Okay. Okay, 12%. And then, uh, let's see, what is it? write an equation. Let Q represent the number of quarters. Okay, so if Q is going to represent quarters, I bet, and I'm, I, bet, I need to use the, I need to use the, the 3%. So I did answer, the, okay, so I already answered the last question. The annual interest rate is 12%, but I got to write the equation here. So the equation for this is going to be Y is equal to $500 initially deposit. This is compound interest, so it's a geometric it's a geometric sequence. I'm multiplying by 1.03 every single quarter and it said what variable was I going to use? Let uh, let q represent the number of quarters. So I'm going to raise this I'm going to raise this to the q power, which is bothering me because I don't usually I want to put an X there but it's a reminder when I put a number in there it better I better be thinking it's quarters all right so the last thing that I uh, that we have here it says compare the earning potentials of the three options a B C above uh, which account is the best investment if you plan to leave your money in for only one year which would grow the most after 10 years so what I want you to do today is I want you to just look at these three options that we were given and I want you to answer that question. Um, and that's what I want you to submit to me today as a small doc, just a response to that. And I know that you've taken great notes and uh, you're ready to continue. So have a great day. It's, uh, it's always nice uh, talking to you. And this is Mr. Roberts. I'll see you again soon.